I invite you to stand as you're able for hymn number 522. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us sing the Gloria together. S280. Let us sing the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You 
You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name. Increase in us true religion. Nourish us with all goodness and bring forth in us the fruit of good works. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. The first lesson is a reading from the Old Testament book of Exodus. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian, he led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Mount Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord did, he had turned aside to see. God called to him in, out of the bush, Moses, Moses, and he said, here I am. Then he said, come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard the cry of on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land that, to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, and the Hivites and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me, and I have also seen how the Egyptians oppressed them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, If I come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your ancestors had sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, This you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Thou shalt, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my title for all generations. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us respond to this reading by saying the portion of Psalm 105 as found in your bulletin insert, responsively by whole verse. We will alternate between this, the epistle side, and the gospel side, beginning with verse 1 on this side of the nave. Everyone join in on the last. Hallelujah. 
Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, and speak of all his marvelous works. Glory in his name, but let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord and his strength. Continually seek his face. Remember the marvels he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O offspring of Abraham, his servant, O children of Jacob, his chosen. Israel came into Egypt, and Jacob became a sojourner in the land of Ham. The Lord made his people exceedingly fruitful. He made them stronger than their enemies. Whose heart he turned so that they hated his people and dealt unjustly with his servants. He sent Moses his servant and Aaron whom he had chosen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A New Testament reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal, be ardent in spirit, serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No. If your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Let us stand as you are able for hymn number 513. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. 
Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what what has been done. Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The Gospel of the Lord. Our ears to hear you, our eyes to see you, our behavior to share you. Glory be to you, God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. So this morning we're given two epic heroes of the Bible. From the Hebrew Bible, we're given the very moment that Moses goes from being an ordinary citizen just some guy who might be an interesting story, into God's chosen prophet and messenger. He becomes the savior for the Hebrew people. And then in the New Testament, in Matthew's gospel account, we hear of the moment before his actual crucifixion, where Jesus tells us about he he too is chosen to do something that we will later find out to be heroic and saving for his people. I think something that stood out for me as I reread these stories is how God drafts people. And so that begs the question, how do you, how do we respond when God calls you into service? Moses, Moses says, why me? Why would they listen to me? He's full of doubt and skepticism. And then when Peter hears Jesus tell of this tragic moment, or what he thinks of will be a tragic moment, he wants to assure Jesus that death isn't the necessary option, that there are easier ways. And Jesus is like, (laughs) he's like, dude, I am not going to let the adversary tempt me away from what has to be done just because just because it seems hard. Peter isn't Satan in that moment. To be clear, Peter's fear is Satan. Fears and doubts do so much more harm than we realize. They paralyze us and they dismantle our abilities to accomplish things because we're so captured by the what ifs and what may be's. Now, Mike's going to love this because wasn't it Yoda from Star Wars who popularized the slogan, fear leads to anger, anger leads to hate, and hate leads to suffering. The path to the dark side, as Yoda tells us, right? The path to our own downfall is paved by fears and doubts. And yet, and yet fear and doubt do keep us alive and they continue to keep us safe. Fear and doubt birthed insurance and banking. 
They birthed 401ks and pensions. They birthed unions and child labor laws. Fear and doubt by themselves aren't always bad. But when fear and doubt try to hinder the mission of God, that is when we need to be very suspicious of our fears and doubts. So what do we do? How do we combat these fears and threat that threaten to cripple us? To Moses, God declares his very name. That's not even something he does to Abraham. To Peter and the disciples, we get Jesus' iconic words to take up our crosses and follow him. And the assurance is that no matter how bad it might actually be here on earth, the rewards, the altruistic payoffs, they're worth it. And Paul's directives to the Christians in Rome, these Christ followers who live at the very epicenter of the largest and most powerful empire in history, are to respond to darkness, to respond to control, to respond to fear with light, to respond to hate and violence with love and empathy and goodness. But to Moses, to Peter and the disciples, to the Christ followers in Rome, to all of these different ways, the same sentiment is conveyed. Instead of being insecure, instead of allowing yourselves to be emotionally be beaten, God reminds us over and over again that our personal transformation is possible not because of ourselves, but because of the one who sends us. I remember listening to a pastor who described this moment for Moses as his insecurity moment. And I remembered thinking to myself how often I have had those insecurity moments as well. How often do you doubt yourself? How often do you wonder at your own worthiness? And when you wonder, what would Jesus say to our doubt? Or what would God the Father say to our insecurities? You get responses from our readings today which should give us all pause. To Peter's fear, Jesus says, get behind me, Satan. To Moses' insecurity, God the Father says, remind them that their God, the one who sends you, is the one who guided Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, the liberator of all Israel. Transformation of the self. Transformation is terrifying. Change is terrifying. And it's gosh darn near impossible when you try to imagine that it's your own skill that makes it possible. But the beauty of this morning's scriptures are that this indelible reminder of who is in your corner on this journey of personal or group transformation. We all have fears and doubts. Every day the enemy tries to put doubts into my own head about my self-worth and skill. To every single one of us, our fears have a way of drilling into our most, most tender moments. And they threaten our happiness. And yet, and yet God gives us his name. Last week, Jesus asked us, who do you say that I am? And today, God gives us the very I am who causes all beings into existence. The same God of our ancestors. The same God who rescued the Hebrew people out of bondage. The same God who had Peter walk on water and fed thousands. That is the God that tries to build up our self-esteem and tell us we are worthy. That is the God that tells the enemy inside your mind to step back and move out of the way. So how do you do it? How do we do it? How do we invoke God's name into our fears and into our insecurities? Take up your cross, Jesus says. Face your fears. Do the thing that you are called to do and do it with your whole heart. Don't back down. Because it's not about actually facing your fears, it's about telling your fears that you have more important things to do than to cower to them. 
Brendan's, two of Brendan's uncles uh, were Navy SEALs. And I think about that from time to time. I was thinking about that a lot when I first met them, but <laughs> I think about that from time to time. And the courage that it takes to do something so potentially terrifying. I imagine that out of all the Navy SEALs that have to paratroop into situations, some of them had to have been afraid of heights at some point in their lives. But they knew that what they were doing was more important than the fears that tried to hold them back. It wasn't about fear not existing. It was about the call being more important. My dad, as you all know, is in recovery counseling. Um, he's a counselor, and he tells you that in order to move forward, it's not about what you don't want, but about what you do. That there has to be a vision for the future, not just a memory of the past. You have to desire that place to go. You have to lift up that cross that you are going to bear. You have to be motivated to the future that you want, not just the fear that you're running from. At Gethsemane, Jesus doesn't say, God, make my fears go away. He says, Father, your will be done. None of us are these perfect, fearless people. Like I said, fear is good. Fear can help us create amazing things. It will hopefully help us cure this planet before climate change completely destroys it. But, you've, but fear can't Fear can't chain you to a chair and make you afraid to try. Trying is the path to transformation. That is the lesson Jesus tells us today. And that is the lesson that God tells Moses, that Paul teaches us to the Christians in Rome, trying not because of your fears or in spite of them, but trying because you're pursuing something much more important. Transformation is possible. You just have to be willing to let your fears be cast behind you and move forward with them anyway. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able and that we might together recite the profession of faith in your bulletin. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, 
by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Jesus straightened up and said to the woman who sinned, Woman, where are they? Is there no one to condemn you? She said, No one, sir. Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on, don't sin anymore. The peace of the Lord be always with you. God's peace, you are beloved. 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 Merci beaucoup. God's peace, you are beloved. 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 As you arrived, you were given a token. In addition to what you might normally give, we invite you to place this token in the plate with a prayerful offering of yourself to God. It could be a promise of time, of talent, of treasure. It could be a resolution. It could even be a prayer of desperation or thanksgiving, a gift of your vulnerability to God. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering sacrifice for us. The hymn for this morning is 593. Thank you. 
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks, for you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light, inaccessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day, and beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise, joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven. We acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. We acclaim you, Holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our Creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior, incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners, freedom, to the sorrowful, joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death and rising from the grave, destroyed death and made the whole creation anew. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe to complete his work in the world and bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. 
And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts that you have given us, this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in the goodness and mercy your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. Lord, in baptism we were joined as part of the body of Christ. Remember from the Anglican cycle of prayer the clergy and people of the church of the province of the Indian Ocean, which includes the islands of Madagascar, Mauritius, and the Seychelles. James Wong, Archbishop. From the Vermont cycle of prayer, we remember the people of Holy Trinity in Swanton, Rob Spainhauer, Rector. And remember all the dioceses of our church, including Hawaii, Haiti, Puerto Rico, and all other distressed communities who suffer grievously within our own Episcopal Church. Also remember Archbishop Justin, Presiding Bishop Michael, Bishop Shannon, our priest, Father Jeremy, and all who minister in your church. Remember all who seek your truth. Remember the leaders of all peoples, especially Joseph, our president, and those in places of war, terrorism, famine, and natural disaster caused by climate change. Remember all who have the ability to choose peace over division, that there may be reconciliation among nations and among peoples of all politics, races, ethnicities, faiths, and identities. We pray for all of God's creation and the good stewardship of our natural resources and our relationships. We fervently pray for the clergy and people of the Diocese of Hawaii, Haiti, and Puerto Rico in the Episcopal Church USA, the Episcopal Church of Jerusalem and the Middle East, and all those in distressed communities around the world. Remember our wardens, priests, vestry members, and the members of the discernment committee as they pray and work for the furtherance of God's work in and from this community of faith. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Remember all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially David Danahar and his family, Susan and Andy Nagel, Marion Sibley, Wilfred Williamson, Jim Avery, Gus Scott, Robin Bowen, Janet Draffin, Ed Gust, Dorothea Herman, Archbishop Curry, Harold Frediani, Phil Harron, Bud, Vivian Lacey, Dot Whitley, Kelly and Sean Mallon, Cameron Lacey, and all others that we name silently or aloud. June Sherwin. Lord, Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Remember David Scott, son of Gus and Julie Scott, in whose memory this Sunday's altar flowers are given. Remember Ma Michelle Ann Sylvester, Debbie McFall, 
and all who have died in the peace of Christ and those whose faith is known to you alone. Bring them into, into the, the place of eternal joy and light and grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, matriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with St. James, St. Peter, and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into the temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and if you don't him by faith in your hearts with thanksgiving. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the announcements. Uh, just a couple of announcements this morning. Uh, the first is that the bishop's visit again is next uh, is next week, and so if you have not let us know that uh, you plan on being here, please, please, please let us know. We'd like to make sure that we have enough food for the reception, um, and we're really excited about that. We've got not just as part of the bishop's visitation, but we have people who are being welcomed into the communion. Uh, we have people who are being confirmed, and so it's going to be a really joyous moment. Um, people from St. Peter's, people from St. James, and so it's just a really happy moment. Um, the second announcement, oh, it's at 11 o'clock, thank you. Yes, it's a special time, it's 11 a.m., not our normal 10 o'clock, so thank you. I always want to, like, mention that time, and so, yeah. Um, I have to say that this morning we had the cows out, so the scripture, and we were doing the Old Testament reading when we were doing the outside math, so having the land of milk and honey and having wildflowers and cows right there in front of you was really cool. So if you all haven't gotten a chance to do one of our outside worship services, um, give it a try once, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of cool. The cows are always there. What? Yes, that's true. That, that would be at a 7.30 in the morning service, yeah. Um, hopefully, so all of the, the postcards went out, so hopefully you have the next eight weeks. Um, if you haven't gotten them yet, they're either in your mailbox or if you're visiting us this morning, we can grab some for you, but they basically say when we're having Holy Eucharist versus um, morning prayer and the visitation, all saints and all souls are on there. We are keeping our normal worship routine of first and third, second and fourth, but if you just have, want something to put on your fridge, it's just a nice way to just keep track of things. So the last uh, announcement is that hopefully you all received the message through the Shell listserv that this morning's uh, um, 
discussion is canceled uh, and that the ballot is canceled and that that is due to a number of factors and that Chris Draffin, Mike Rice, and myself will be downstairs able and happy to talk with people about that further. But a full letter from the three of us and from the vestry out to the, out to the parish went through that, that list this morning. Um, forever and always, we invite you to Coffee Hour. It is a wonderful place to socialize and to get to know everyone. And so the last announcement is that if you haven't uh, volunteered to, to do something during Norman's Attic, um, volunteer to do something during Norman's Attic. It's an all hands on deck event because it really is one of the just the heartbeat pulse moments of this wider community. And so I would say if, if you haven't volunteered to be able to do something, don't do it because you have to do it because it's a great way to just be involved. It's a great way to get to know other people and to be part of this thing that, that our church is doing uh, September 17th, uh, 16th. September 16th, and then I'll see you all the day after for church, obviously, where we will bless everything that we made from Norman's Attic um, for the right use. And so our final hymn for this morning is 450. Verses one. Verses one through three. I knew I forgot something. Verses one through three. <laughs> Go in peace first to coffee hour and then to the Lord, into the world. Thanks be to God.